Rideshare electric scooters. If you live in a city, you've probably seen these on the streets. And while they may offer a cheap and convenient way of getting from A to B, they've also caused some accidents. And according to a recent study, most of those accidents happen right here on the sidewalk. See, while it's illegal to ride on the sidewalk, people still do, even when they're told not to. Do you know it's illegal to ride those on the pavement? So now rideshare companies like Bird and Spin are trying to stop people cruising down the sidewalk for good. And to do so, they're trying to make their scooters smarter. But they're not just developing new technology to try and keep riders and pedestrians safe. They're also doing it to try and survive. More on that later. So what are they doing? Well, let's find out. Okay, so in case you don't know, here's how these e-scooters work. You download a smartphone app, and for just a few dollars, you can unlock one of these and go zipping along at speeds of up to 15 miles per hour. Let's go. And while many people use them safely and legally, some don't. On the highway? Bro, what are you doing? Bro, what are you doing? There have been issues with everything, from drunk driving, to people not wearing helmets, to people riding in tandem. But scooter companies have managed to partially address some of these problems through techie solutions, like using an in-app test to try and establish if the rider is drunk, or using photo verification to check if you're wearing a helmet, or monitoring weight distribution to stop people riding in tandem. But as simple as it may seem, trying to find a techie way to stop people from riding this on the sidewalk has been really challenging for these companies. And that's because this scooter and others like it knows roughly where I am and can stop me from going in certain zones, but it has no idea exactly where I am. And crucially, it can't tell the difference between the road and the sidewalk. And that means the only thing that's really stopping me from riding this over here is my executive producer, who has said I categorically cannot break the law, especially on camera. So to try and solve sidewalk riding, rideshare companies are turning to AI. We started getting requests from cities to say, hey, we'd like you guys to be responsible for not riding on the sidewalks. Bird, who are one of the first rideshare e-scooter companies, say they're testing a chip that fuses GPS data with other sensors to get a better understanding of exactly where the rider is. The GPS chip on its own might say, hey, I think that you're somewhere in this uh, area. And then you can just say, well, hey, 30 feet ago, the GPS was super confident and we know that we've traveled about 30 feet and we haven't changed course. And so in practice, we can get down to about 10 centimeters of accuracy. Bird told me that information is then cross-referenced with sidewalk location data to calculate if the rider is on the sidewalk. The sensors aren't out on their public scooters just yet, so it's yet to be seen how effective this technology will be in the real world. But Bird tells me it will be coming out sometime this year. Meanwhile, tech providers like Drover AI are working on a different solution. We look around via the camera and our brain is the AI processor on board the vehicle that is using deep learning algorithms that have been trained across dozens of cities and multiple millions of images to effectively um, do granular infrastructure distinction. Drover's system, the Path Pilot, uses cameras to detect whether the scooter is riding on the road or the sidewalk, and has already been retrofitted to some 2,600 scooters, most of which are operated by SPIM. It makes a lot of sense to integrate this more fully into the vehicle design. That typically takes a little time. But right now, no company is using both solutions, and every company I've spoken to had a different stance on how effective each technology would be. But you may be wondering why rideshare companies are going to lengths to stop people from riding on the sidewalk, when at the end of the day, it's the rider themselves that's breaking the law. Well, it's partly to do with the rideshare company's survival. See, when rideshare e-scooters first appeared on our streets, they were somewhat unregulated, and that meant that pretty much anyone could start a rideshare company. I think that initially, the vendors were more interested in being able to put out as many devices as they could in any particular location and not having the restrictions um, placed on them. But now some counties and cities are beginning to drastically limit the number of rideshare e-scooter companies that are allowed to operate. So to try and secure that golden ticket permit, these companies are trying to advertise to city officials that they can be safer than their rivals. You can't just be a different color than the next operator. You have to show up with the kind of tech that cities are starting to demand. And for some, getting that permit may be the only way to turn a profit. If they know that they're one of limited number that are licensed and able to distribute their devices, that they are going to at least meet a particular market share that they're hoping will be enough for profits. Spin recently said it was doing just that, no longer competing in open permit markets where anyone could operate as the company said it was difficult to be profitable in those markets. 
And with companies battling to secure those permits, experts say there could be consolidation ahead. So while new technology may make e-scooters a little bit safer, it may also kill off some of the competition. Hey, thanks for watching. What forms of micromobility are you following? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in the future of how we might be getting from A to B, then don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.